we're going to do a basket or harvest apron. I found a really cute vintage pattern. It's just something you print offline and I'm going to walk you through it. It's available out there for free. I've seen it on blogs. I've seen it on a few um, like school websites for colleges. Like it's out there. So I'm going to show you how to draft off their pattern and um, how we're going to make it up. Let me show you this. I've got my one of those cardboard um, cutting boards and then lay it on top of my cutting table because it has the one inch squares which we need which will make this so much easier so we're going to do that um, I have my pattern paper I have my pencil I've got some tape because I have a feeling I might need to tape together a couple pieces my ruler and then these are the fabrics we're going to use now it says use a good sturdy cotton you could use a canvas you could use denim um, you could use ducking anything like that would work I want to make mine double sided. I'm going to make mine two layers, and I have, I'm in part of using up my stash, I have these gorgeous fabrics. I just love them, and I like that they're a dark color. They're not going to show soil as much because they are going to be out in the garden quite a bit. So these are from my sister's line. I think they're still available out there. Um, I know they're available on Etsy. They're from QT Fabrics. And so I'll put a link down below to at least one of the locations that I know you can get these fabrics. I've made these before. I made my mom a really pretty shirt using this. Um, and there's a third one that's like this with the white background. But I don't want that in my apron today. So we're going to use these two. It's going to kind of be double-sided. Um, and actually, we'll look. I think I'm going to make it completely reversible so it doesn't really matter um, which side you use. And then it says to use a shoestring, which you totally could. But I have this great webbing that I bought for another dress where, that had drawstrings um, in the sleeves and, and a couple places, and I have a ton of it. Look at how much I have on here. So we're going to use this for the drawstrings in our pattern. Let's lay out our board and start making our pattern. Here's the original pattern with the graph paper. Here's mine that's just a little bit larger and easier to read I, for me so that when I'm counting out I think it makes it easier. So we're going to just start drafting. I know this is 30 inches so I can just start counting my squares and I'm going to give myself plenty of room here. 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. Now I'm going to double check that I did that right. So once I've got I know this is 30. I'm leaving this right on the edge. This is going to be my fold. So I'm going to go ahead and write on here, center front. I'm going to put my little arrow, fold. So from that, I know this here is 10 inches. I'm just going to put a little mark because it's not 10 straight across. It comes up an inch and a quarter right here. So inch and a quarter at the nine mark. So I can start to get this shape. See this got a curved waistband. And then I'm going to come all the way down here. It's almost exactly in the middle and it's seven here. So it's flat right there, seven inches before we start curving. I'm gonna just make this a little darker so you guys can see it better. All right, now this in the middle here, it's 17 inches. So right at about 15. So here's my middle of this. I'm going to count over 17. So that's its widest part. Okay, so from there, now I'm ready to start connecting up and making this curved. Now their curve is, it's a little slopier here and a little fuller here. So you can do it how you want. If you want to plot out each direction, you can. This 17 inches goes a couple inches each direction, this widest part here is at one, two, three, four, five. Oh, I did exactly five. Just eyeballing it, I did. So now I'm ready to start curving this, and I'm actually going to use a straight edge just for a minute to get the basic here. I'm gonna do it real light, and then I'm gonna come back and curve it. But that helps my eye. Now I'm freehanding this. You could 100% measure each square if you want to. Now, also, I will say this is plenty wide, but if you want an even wider apron or a longer apron, you, once you get the basics, you could start making your alterations. And then down here, I'm going to kind of do, I want it kind of full and rounder. Okay. That is our basic, this is the basic apron. This is the waist. 
This is the hem, which will become the bottom of the basket. Now in our little pattern, she has, or they, whomever made this, they have a couple little spots that we're going to make our eyelets for the drawstring to come through. So on this, on the bottom, it's, it's almost exactly at the seven mark. And then I think it's about seven from the waist too. Yep, six, seven. So about right here. So here's our little eyelet. I'm gonna make it sort of a flower. And that's our markings. It has half inch seam allowance. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that on here. Now you could do a narrow or seam allowance. That's really up to you. Um, if you do a narrow seam allowance, it's gonna make it just a little bit larger, like a half an inch larger. If you do quarter inch, you'll get a half inch larger garment. This needs to fall, like so if we do our half inch here, and then we do our half inch for a casing, you wanna make sure that this eyelet thing falls within that extra seam allowance, which I'll talk to you about um, when we're over at the sewing machine. So now I'm just going to draft my um, ties, and it, ties can be made longer. A lot of times I make a longer tie than they give us. I know it's three inches wide, and this is also cut on the fold. Can you see me over here? 21. So it's 21, which would make it that's about a 40 inch waist or 40 inch um, tie, which you see is not super long depending on your waist. And then it has a little point like this. And that's the waistband. So I can say, I'm sitting here looking at this thing, I want mine a lot longer than that. That's just way too short. I'm gonna add six inches down here. And by six, I mean I've added three, but doubled it will make it six. And then I think I'm gonna go ahead and lengthen it this end too. I like a long, long waistband. This is the fun part about when we are making our own designs. This is now ready to cut out. When we cut, I'm gonna cut two waistbands and I'm gonna cut two of the apron. Both of these will be on the fold. And this is our straight of grain. The fold line will be our straight of grain. Whether it's cross grain or lengthwise, doesn't really matter if you're using a good stable woven. I'm going to layer and cut, which means I'm going to cut out both layers at the same time and make sure I get my um, folds exactly on top of each other. Because this one is a stripe, I want to make sure that this is the one that I don't want to get off. It can look really wonky. So I'm going to put this one that you can't, the pattern will not be that noticeable if you get it off a little bit. I'm going to put it on the bottom. I'm going to put the stripe on top. If I get that off, you can see your stripes going off to one direction. So that's what we don't want. Probably lay it just like that. Now, the waistband, so I'm gonna cut mine going this way, um, all the way down one side of this. So I'm gonna cut this out first, and then I'll come back and cut my waistbands. This is how it's going to look. And when I lay it out like this, I can get two apron pieces cut at once. Remember, this one's on the fold. So either make your pattern piece so it's not on the fold if you're gonna run up the side like this, or if you're doing, um, like I did, if you lengthen it, it won't fit. It won't fit across here. So the shorter one will, actually it almost doesn't fit on a 45 inch wide fabric. So you have to think about that when you're, you know, you have to make some decisions on the fly when you're working. I'm gonna get these all cut out and I'll meet you over at the sewing machine. The first thing we're going to do, now that we're cut out, is we're going to transfer the spots where we're going to make our little eyelets. Um, at either at the sewing machine or if you have a, like a grommet type center, you could set in a metal eyelet if you want to. No matter what though, we have to interface behind it. So let's transfer our markings. Remember we want to sew that or, or set that little hole in um, beyond our seam allowance just a little bit, but it's going to be caught into a, um, we're going to make a, a casing there. So let me get, I'm still gonna mark it with my yellow pen, you can use Taylor's chalk, whatever you want. I'm sticking a pin in it, and I'm going to take my little ruler and I'm going to check, because I want to sew this with quarter inch seam allowance, and then I'm going to do a half inch casing. So mine has to go, okay, I'm putting a pin right where I want to do the marking. You only have to put a hole in one of your fabrics. So you have to choose one, you don't need holes on both sides. Your, your strings are gonna come out on one side, um, and technically that would be, it will cup it to the inside, so that technically will be your inside. I want my stripe to be the inside and the floral to be the outside, that way it could be completely reversible. So I'm going to go ahead and mark this just on my stripe, on both sides, make sure you get both sides of your stripe. 
That's why I put the pin right in it. And I'm using yellow because yellow shows up really well, or white might, depending, but yellow shows up really well on this um, dark fabric. i do the same thing over here. I don't need this. I've said in the past how you want to hang on to all your scraps of usable interfacing, and now we're going to use them. And I'm also going to do a sample one. So I'm going to cut a scrap for my sample, and then I'm going to just cut some squares where I'm going to put. Now, whether you sew in this hole, if you do a buttonhole, or if you do a grommet, you need to interface behind it. So we're going to just take these little interfaced pieces, and we're going to put them behind our markings and fuse those in. So here's my marking. So right on the other side of that. Make sure it's centered well. I can just fuse these down. Make sure that the, the dots, if you are um, towards the wrong side of the fabric, you could use a sew-in if you want to, any stabilizer. If you have it, you could use another piece of the same fabric, but you want something stable. I like the fusible. It adds an extra, the glue and everything adds a little extra layer of security. So that's my own personal preference. Now, I'm going to go over, I'm going to do a test at my sewing machine. I'm going to try, we, I have a little circular eyelet. I'm going to try and see if it's big enough for me to get my um, drawstring through. And if not, then I will do a tiny buttonhole. You could definitely do a metal eyelet if you wanted to though. So we're gonna just do that in all the corners and on my scrap where I'm going to be doing my tests. And while I'm here, I'm gonna go ahead and just press everything out because it just makes everything nicer. This is my scrap with the little piece behind it. This is the first one I'm going to try. Let's see how it does. I think that the pressure of having the um, the string come in and out will probably wear this out. Let's try a buttonhole. Okay, I've chosen a buttonhole. I'm using my buttonhole foot that memorizes the length. So after I do the first one, I will be set. And that I think will be a lot much more firm and it's still nice and tight. So this is what I'm going to use if I want my buttonhole to go side to side or up and down. And I think I'm going to go up and down. I just think it's going to fit in the seam allowance better. So this is, you can either make this the start or the middle. It doesn't really matter. Um, it's a nice long casing. I'm just going to make it start there and come down. And then when I come to the bottom, I will start at the bottom and go to the top. Okay going to do the other three. So I have four little buttonholes in this piece and now we're ready to move on to the next part. We're going to trim our threads and we're going to cut the buttonholes open. Be very careful, you can easily cut through your buttonhole threads. So I use a really sharp seam ripper um, or they make buttonhole cutters but usually they're in like half inch sizes and this buttonhole is smaller than a half inch, at least mine is. So I'm poking in one end and I'm just gently cutting through just enough to get it open but not hitting any of those threads so that I have it open. You want to cut these open before we go on to do more construction and you want to go ahead and give it a haircut around those buttonholes. Now I'm sitting here looking at this while I was sewing a buttonhole actually and I started thinking, you know what I always use when I go out is I have either some scissors or shears with me um, and I trim up my plants. Sometimes I clip um, the vine where I'm taking a fruit when I'm harvesting. And I thought, I kind of want a little pocket to put that in separate from the pocket where the harvested food, will, the fruit will go. So I think I'm gonna add an extra pocket at this point. This is when we would do it. So this is my in, what I'm considering my inside and the thing's going to draw off this way and you're gonna mostly see this for the basket. Part. I'm going to take this scrap and I'm just going to cut a little pocket that I'm going to sew on the inside that I can keep scissors or shears or twine or whatever in that I want to keep separate from all the fruit that I have harvested. So I'm going to cut a little pocket real quick out of the scrap. So I've just made a little pocket. Um, I left the bottom with a little hole to turn it. So I'm going to do that real quick. It's kind of a funky shaped pocket and I did that on purpose. I wanted it a little wider at the top. I just thought it'd be easier to use. I'm just thinking about functionality. The little hole in the bottom that I'm turning it through will get sewn shut when I top stitch it down. So I'm just gonna press this really quickly. 
top stitch this on and then we'll be ready to finish putting together. You don't have to add a pocket if you don't want to. The whole thing is a giant pocket. So it's sort of how you use your, your apron. So I'm going to sew it up here. I don't want it too close to the waistband. I want it down. If it's up high, it's not as easy to use. You want it a little lower. You could easily make multiple pockets across. I mean, you can decide this how you want. It's very easy to add these things. So I'm just going to top stitch this on and then we'll be ready to go on to the next step. All right, I have a pocket right here. I'm looking at this in the camera and thinking this would make such a nice like a Hawaiian shirt. So now that I've done that, I've, I've laid this out. Here's my waist and I'm going to line up my two pieces at the um, right sides together, starting from the waistline down. And we're going to sew this around. We're gonna leave the waistline open. We're gonna sew around the curve and leave the waistline open depends on the seam allowance you chose to do. It gave us half inch, I chose to go with quarter inch. The reason I did that is because we're making a casing and I don't have to go back and trim away um, my seam allowance. I can just leave it at a quarter inch, turn it, and then sew my half inch casing. And that's what I chose to do. You can sew it at the half inch and then you'll need to trim out some of that seam allowance before turning and making the casing. It's up to you. Because I chose to do that, it'll make my gar whole garment the whole project about a half an inch wider, which is fine. It's fine, it's a basket apron, it's a harvest apron. So now that I've got these lined up like that, right sides together, I'm gonna to sew all the way around the curve, leaving the waistline open. This is a project you don't need a searcher for, you can sew the whole thing other than the buttonhole with a straight stitch. Um, the buttonhole, you need a buttonholer. If you don't have a buttonholer, you could get an eyelet setter and set it in an eyelet. You could even hand sew. Um, a buttonhole if you really wanted to. All right, I'm gonna sew this real quick. We'll just take a second. Okay, here is our giant apron. It is big, which is great. It'll hold a lot of veggies, and I've sewn all the way around. The top is open, so we can pull this whole thing through the top and give it a good press, and then we're gonna stitch again around this to make a casing for our drawstring. So here you can see where the two are sewn together. Now, if you did a wider seam allowance, I only did quarter inch. If you did a wider seam allowance, you need to go in and trim out some of that. It's just not going to lay nice. And we're gonna give it a good press. I always like to, if I can, at least get it started here. I'm gonna lay it over the side of my board like this and kind of press it to one side, the seam allowance that is to get it nice and flat. So do as much of that as you can as you go around. Pressing is everything, even if you never iron it again. Iron when you sew, it makes such a difference. Make sure that you are getting that edge, that sewn edge, right on the edge. You don't want it to pull to the front or the back. You could sandwich in here a cute little um, trim, have a trimmed edge if you wanted to. And here's my buttonhole right here. So this is how it's gonna be. We're just gonna press all the way around. Then I'm gonna come back and I'm going to stitch at the half inch mark. And that's going to get my buttonhole on the inside. So I have a casing. So I'm gonna just stitch all the way around a half an inch from the edge. And then we'll be ready to put our drawstrings in and attach our waistband. If you look at their picture, it looks like their waistband is only one, um, one width, it looks like they have one waistband. It's kind of narrow when it's sewn and that's it. I cut out two, you can do either. If you do it like they do it, you're gonna have a real narrow waistband, which is fine. You can do it either way. I cut out two thinking I'd want a wider reversible waistband. It doesn't really matter. I'm actually considering just using this one. So I think I am gonna just cut one. I would interface it. If it, I, I think that it would be good to interface your waistband. Everything suspends from that. It gives it stability. It makes it a little stronger. It makes it nice and firm when you're tying it. I just think it's nicer. It doesn't say to do that, but I personally am going to go ahead and do a strip of interfacing in here um, just to give it a little more stability. I'm going to go ahead and sew my half inch around, press and sew my half inch, and then I'll show you how I'm going to sew on the waistband and we'll put our drawstrings in sewing my half inch casing around so you can see this is how it looks there's my little buttonhole i did get it just inside there and this is what i'm going to feed my um, my drawstrings through so they're going to go from one buttonhole 
around to the other buttonhole and draw up that whole corner. Okay, I'm all the way around, made my little casing. I've cut my drawstrings 50 inches. It doesn't give an exact amount on the pattern, and what I did is I measured from buttonhole to buttonhole, and it was 32 inches, and then I just kind of hung off a little bit on each end because you want plenty to grab onto to pull. Um, so I added a, about seven inches on each end. So in the end, I cut 50 inches for each side, and then I also cut a small piece of my um, tape here that, that I'm using for a drawstring. Sm cut a small piece to make a little loop at the waistband. So there's a little loop right here at the waistband. And this is what I'm thinking. The pattern does not call for this, but I'm thinking if I pull up both of those and I tie them, that's great, but it will be more secure if I pull them up and I tie them through this loop. So I and I may or may not use it, but I'm gonna go ahead and have it in there. It's, if nothing else, I can hang the garment by it <laughs> in my pantry, um, but I'm, I'm gonna have the little loop there. If you want this to be completely reversible, make sure you put your pocket on both sides. Make sure you put your loop on both sides if you choose to do it. So I've done those things. I'm just gonna tack this in before I do the waistband. I've taken one of my drawstrings I've um, added a safety pin, and I've made sure the safety pin will fit in my hole. So here's my waistband. This, the drawstring is going to go into your casing that you just made. So I'm gonna go into that hole, and we're gonna go towards the next hole. So we're fishing from waistband down to the bottom to the first one, so it's right here. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna, just gonna fish this through. You want it to be longer than the casing is. So my casing was about 32 inches, so you can see. I'm super pleased, I had everything. I did not have to buy anything to make this. Okay, we're almost to the other end. You can see how that's gonna pull up. It gathers really easily. This is why it was important to have a good buttonhole though, because there will be friction. Whatever opening you have for this drawstring is gonna get some friction. And I would rather have my drawstrings long and cut them later if I see I don't need that than have them on the short end and struggle with them. You don't want them to get sucked down inside. And if you're like me, this is going to get washed quite a bit. So here it is through. And I'm just going to pull this so you can kind of see. So you can see how you pull this up. See how you can pull that up. And then here's my loop that I made. So I can actually pull this up and tie it through that loop and give it more stability. And I'm going to, um, one of the things I'm going to do to help keep this from going through is I'm just gonna knot the end of each of my little ties here. That'll help it keep from fraying and it will also help keep it from pulling through the little buttonhole like that. So here's my first side. And the thing is you can just release this back out and it's just a flat apron. And this is why we want to make sure you have plenty of drawstring because when you're releasing this back out, if you don't, you could accidentally suck in one side. So there it is flat. And here's one of the strings. Super easy. Though I can't ever imagine wearing this down. Like this is long. I don't know why you would ever wear it down. I would always probably pull it up and leave it. I'd probably pull it up and leave it other than washing. I can see releasing it for washing. Or if you had a heavy load and you wanted to untie it and let the whole load out, maybe, I don't know. Anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side and then we'll be ready for waistband. All right, we have our drawstrings in. I have my waistband interfaced just on one side and I didn't bother interfacing in the uh, seam allowance, so I just did like a one inch strip. I decided to do the skinnier waistband and not do the double. I am gonna make a separate second apron, so I'm going to use the other waistband for it. So this one is going to have this contrast waistband, and then the other one will have this waistband, which is also very cute. I've done all that, I've marked my center front, I pinned my center front to the center front of the apron, and I'm. Uh, this is open, and I'm going to go ahead and just continue to pin this till I get to the edge on both sides. And if you pin this into submission, now you're pinning, you're pinning a flat, straight waistband to a slightly curved waistline. So you'll have to do a little easing here, but it should go fine. It should not be it, the easing should be easy. So this is how it's pinned. Here's my waistband and it hangs off. So once you get that pinned, what I'm doing here, 
This side, we can go ahead and fold in half, and we're gonna stitch this up, put a couple more pins in it. So we're folding it in half right sides together. So this can all get stitched to itself until we get to, or close to it, where we get to the actual apron. So this will, you can kind of finish it and flip it inside out. So you can measure that and sew that however you want to. You could sew each of these ends first and then come back and put it on the waistband. I kind of, so here's my pin. So see this? This can get sewn and flipped on each end and I've just left a little space here where it's then going to get attached to the waistband. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to sew these and if you have an interfaced, a side with interfacing and a side without, put the interfacing side up when you sew. It will, it's always more stable, gives less, and then the side that isn't interfaced will go against the feed dogs and the feed dogs will do the work of easing and keeping the two together and make them happy as they get sewn together and you won't have any issues with that. So here's this. So I'm gonna go over and I'm just gonna sew this. And this I am sewing at the half, uh, half inch. So we're gonna sew all of this up to about where the waist starts or the where the apron starts on both ends. So I'm gonna sew that really quickly. Once that's sewn and this is pinned on, then we'll go ahead and sew just the, this one edge We'll flip everything in and around and then we'll top stitch that whole long line. All right, we're gonna get both of those things done and then we'll be back to finish the little tiny bit that's left of the apron. And when you get ready to turn, I'll tell you now, before you turn it, make sure you trim out a little bit in these little corner ends before you flip it around because it gets kind of thick with that half inch seam allowance in there. So here's my waistband attached, right side what I'm considering right side. Now, if you're doing this reversible, it doesn't really matter. And it is, I mean, you can see the other side's perfectly beautiful too. And I've got my little ties. So now I'm going to come in and just do a little trimming and grading. I'm going to, this nice pointy end is gonna get trimmed up a bit so that when I turn it, it's not too bulky. And now this is ready to be turned to the inside. At this waistband part here where this seam is, we have a waistband and we have two um, apron seams all at the half inch. So you could easily grade some of that if you want to. If not, it's fine. It depends on how heavy it is. If you're working with denim or canvas, you should probably do a little grading because that seam's gonna get super thick when we get ready to top stitch it. So now that we've done all of that, we're going to turn this waistband inside out. Now, you could have done not done it this way. You could have totally top stitched. I have a little turner tool here. Um, you could have just pressed and top stitched it. They don't give a lot of directions. They just sh kind of show it finished. Um, this is an older pattern. It looks like 1940s. I should have looked. I'll look it up and see. It looks like it's 1940s looking at her garment, like the lady's hair and her dress looks sort of 1940s, which would make sense because there's so many victory gardens happening in in that era um, because of World War II. So I'm gonna turn these inside out real quick and then we'll be back for top stitching and it'll be done. All right, I have got my little ties and this is the wrong side of the waistband. I have pinned it down. I've got my pins on this side so that I can just top stitch all the way across. You could just top stitch just this. You could also whip stitch it by hand, but because this is going to take a lot of weight, I machine stitching um, is usually going to be a little stronger. So I'm going to top stitch this waistband all the way across, catching all layers. I will be stitching, this is the wrong side. The pins are on this side, so I will be stitching on this side. And once that's done, it's done. Now you could, and in the directions it shows also top stitching the top of the waistband. So you can top stitch all the way around this waistband as much as you want. All that does is make it a little stronger, a little firmer, a little more stable. So do all the top stitching that you want to do. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and do my little bit of waistband and I'll meet you over at the dress form and show you how it looks. Okay, finished apron. I have not pulled any strings or anything yet. Here's the little pocket. Here's the little loop in the front. I'm gonna turn this because remember, I lengthened the straps a lot. And this is a tiny dress form. This one has, I think, a 24 inch waist. And you can see this is all the tie. After you tie it, you might want an even longer 
tie, depending on how you like to tie yours. So anyway, that's the tie in the back. And we're going to pull the strings. And you just pull the strings. And this is how much room we have in it. Now that's a lot of little strings there. And I just pull these out real quick so you can see if we tie it. Okay, so now here it is. If we don't tie it in the middle, that's how it looks. It's reversible. Pretty cute. Pretty cute.